Fiction is fake. This little saying is what I learned in school to help me remember the difference between fiction and nonfiction. Fiction is created. Fiction is fabricated. But what's the best thing about fiction being fake? It's interesting. Yet, among the vast sea of interesting fictional works, there are times where a piece will rise above the rest. Due to various factors, there are certain stories that evolve into one-of-a-kind pieces deserving of being put on a pedestal. And the most pressing work worthy of this admiration is Tokyo Revengers. Aside from My Hero Academia, Tokyo Revengers was the most popular drop of spring 2021. There was tons of hype surrounding the series. If you are a part of any anime community on social media, you could attest. But it makes sense. I mean, gang culture mixed with time travel? It doesn't get much better than that. Especially when nearly all the characters are potential best boy candidates. But even with that said, is Tokyo Revengers truly something special enough to be labeled as peak fiction? Before we answer that question, let me swiftly show my praise to the YouTube algorithm deities by asking you to make sure and subscribe if you haven't, give the video a little like, and follow me on Twitter for any updates. But enough social submissiveness, let's get into why you clicked the video in the first place. I feel like a little bit of background knowledge is required to be able to truly deep dive into the fictional worth of Tokyo Revengers. First and foremost, what even is peak fiction in the first place? The consensus definition is that it's one of the greatest works from any medium. This would indicate that it is indeed a bold claim for me to say that Tokyo Revengers is one of the best anime slash manga to ever exist. Next, what do examples of peak fiction look like? Oftentimes, great pieces of fiction that have withstood the test of time are referred to as classics. Evidently, there are some literary classics that have not aged well as new writing strategies have emerged throughout the years, and there are other classics whose entitlement of being a classic came without merit. So for the sake of this video, whenever I refer to the classics, I am specifically talking about the most commonly praised exemplars. Given that Tokyo Revengers didn't even begin publishing until 2017, it is too early for me to label it a classic. That's why I titled the video Tokyo Revengers as Peak Fiction and not Tokyo Revengers as a classic. However, in the four plus years of its publishing, in addition to the anime adaptation, I believe it is safe to assert that Tokyo Revengers' success is heavily in part by its tendencies to echo qualities of classic literature. Now there's a difference between mirroring classic literature and straight up copying it. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, don't fix what ain't broken. Going back to My Hero, I feel like this series is the perfect example of using this expression to its fullest potential, and the proof of this would be the series' constant popularity. But it also cannot be ignored that MHA began airing five years ago. The problem with sticking to this phrase nowadays is that all mediums of art must compete in an endless feed of entertainment. In order for a medium to succeed today, it must stand out. While the details for this accent varies, this idea has molded its way into becoming more of a requirement rather than a recommendation. If I had to come up with a phrase to describe Tokyo Revengers' accomplishments, it would be enhance what is functioning. There were several functioning animes that aired during the spring and summer 2021 seasons, but few were able to amplify their significance like Tokyo Revengers did. Essentially, Tokyo Revengers found the perfect middle ground of adhering to timeless tropes while also administering unparalleled uniqueness. So how does Tokyo Revengers manage this? Well, my argument is heavily dictated by my specificity, so let's break it down. And for the sake of comparison, let's look at the narration of the series and place it into a literary genre. The majority of the story is told from the perspective of our main character Takamichi in his teenage form. Given this and the age demographic of manga sales and anime viewership, I would say it's fair to place Tokyo Revengers in the young adult genre. If you are unfamiliar with YA literature, don't worry, because there's actually no agreed upon literal definition for YA. But the reason I believe Tokyo Revengers can be categorized as YA is primarily because of another work considered the quintessential text of the genre, and it is also centered around teens, and it's also about gangs. And if you're from the West and are having middle school flashbacks, I am indeed talking about S.E. Hinton's The Outsiders. For those of you watching Born Outside of the United States, The Outsiders is a text typically taught in junior high. And to be clear, it is not one of those school curriculum books that holds no merit. In fact, scholars commonly credit The Outsiders for having universal themes that transcend both time and location. The Outsiders is an enduring coming-of-age tragedy focusing on a young ponyboy Curtis and his fellow gang members known as the Greasers. I will not go into too much detail about the novel to avoid spoiling it, but just know the similarities in gang civilization in The Outsiders and Tokyo Revengers is prevalent. Furthermore, I think it could be agreed upon that if a book is studied in school, it is a classical work. And the reason I think it should be agreed upon that Tokyo Revengers is peak fiction is because it took this figure of speech of transcending time and location and made it literal. So if YAL has no concrete definition, how is The Outsiders considered the model YA novel and how can I confidently place Tokyo Revengers into the category? Insert a man named Don Gallo. He is a highly accredited anthologist for young adult novels. To elaborate, you know how whenever someone talks about a strong character in an anime, one of the first things you'll hear after is, can he beat Goku though? Well, if any work portrays some elements of YAL, the first thing you would hear in the literary world is what does Don Gallo think? Hopefully this anime analogy was able to help. In continuing, Don Gallo has crafted a list 
list of characteristics of good fiction for young adults. It is in this list where the outsider's credibility lies, and more importantly, how Tokyo Revengers further augments these attributes. Characteristic number one, the main characters are teenagers. This checks out for both the Outsiders and Tokyo Revengers. However, with Tokyo Revengers, you have a protagonist who is simultaneously a teenager and an adult. The advantage of this is that the audience is able to get varying perspectives concerning the mindsets of teenagers. One is able to gather information based on the actions of each member of Tomen in addition to Takemichi's more developed assumptions of the characters. It's like my great grandma always said, why try to learn about an ordinary John Doe when you can find yourself a Tomen husband Doe? Fundamentally, having various avenues to understand characters ultimately leads to increased learning. And this is crucial for trying to determine how and why the timelines play out the way they do in the series. Characteristic number two. The point of view is most often first person and the narrator is most often the main character. Again, this checks out for both titles. This is an essential element of YA so that the audience can learn at the same time as the protagonist and also share the character's feelings in real time. Tokyo Avengers uses this concept brilliantly given that half the time Takamichi has to figure out what's going on before he can even address the problems regarding the plot. In other words, having this be the framework of the series allows for more emotional connection from the consumer. And who doesn't want to build a strong connection with our crybaby hero? Takamichi's appeal is in his practicality of narrating his emotions on his Tomen uniform sleeves. Characteristic number three. The work contains characters and issues to which young adults can relate. Make that check mark twice again. I hope it goes without saying that not everyone can relate to one socioeconomic class dealing with first world problems. Relatability is arguably one of the most important traits a story can possess. At the end of the day, what is the end goal of art consumption? Learning. Sure, entertainment and analysis come along with it, but this is all wrapped around the notion of learning. And genuine learning cannot fully manifest if people are not able to wholeheartedly relate to a piece of work. Tokyo Revengers optimizes this conviction. For those of you in the age demographic of 12 to 17, it does not make sense for you to be shielded from the realities of the world that are considered dark. Tokyo Revengers tackles topics like death, violence, depression, betrayal, and manipulation. These are real issues that everyone needs to know how to address. And not only can anyone above 17 still learn from this subject matter, Tokyo Revengers also offers an additional route of learning for older audiences. While it may be easy to forget at times, Takamichi is 26. That's an adult. If you are around this age, I'm sure you've entertained thoughts like, what if growing up I made this decision instead? Or what if I did this then? Well, as a spectator, you are able to live out these thoughts through Takamichi's time leaps. Whether he fails or succeeds in his trips to the past, audience members are offered a time of reflection. They can reflect on if where they are at today is because of their failures, or what problem solving would look like to them if they had the supernatural ability. Again, these are all ideas to be learned from. I'm not saying Takamichi or Tokyo Revengers has all the answers, but what I am saying is, Tokyo Revengers will allow readers slash viewers to think about what the right answers look like in their own respective lives. Characteristic number four. The outcome of the story is usually dependent upon the decisions and actions of the main character. This one is more clear cut as it relates to the outsiders, but more interesting as it applies to Tokyo Revengers. If protagonists do not dictate the end result, there is no real lesson to be learned. Every action has a consequence, whether good or bad. This is why this characteristic made its way into the YA genre. But in Takamichi's case, there have been multiple outcomes. The outcome in Tokyo Revengers is as much a plot point as it is the end goal of the plot itself. So, are the events in Tokyo Revengers dependent on Takamichi's choices? Yes, but there's a catch. There aren't necessarily right or wrong answers in Tokyo Revengers. It can be framed more so into what is the best answer that Takamichi can make given what he can infer. An inference is a guess a person makes using evidence and background knowledge. In other words, you infer whenever something isn't specifically laid out for you, and given that changing certain events leads to other unexpected events, Takamichi is constantly inferring. While it may seem like the chief outcomes of the story are out of Takamichi's hands, they are arguably just dependent on the strength of his inferences. Obviously, there are elements of life that are simply out of someone's control, and I think Tokyo Revengers does a good job at expressing this idea. But, Takamichi's actions and decisions are unique because he can use background knowledge of the present and apply it when trying to solve the problems of the past. And Takamichi will always find new evidence thanks to his main redeeming quality, the ability to never give up. This is why Tokyo Revengers is special. Regardless of the number of outcomes, Takamichi will infer his way to a conclusion that is beneficial to all. And the last central characteristic offered by Don Gallo, number five, the very best YA works can be as appealing to adults as they are to teens. This can be seen in the student-teacher relationship and the teaching of the outsiders, but it is a bit more distinctive with respect to Tokyo Revengers. To use a famous example to expand on this aspect, think Harry Potter. Imagine you were in a bookstore and you saw a teenager reading Harry Potter. Now imagine you walked a few aisles down and you also saw an adult reading Harry Potter. 
there wouldn't be a difference in your reaction to either party because both of those readings of the book are natural. The same can be said about Tokyo Revengers, but with a dash of eccentricity. Sort of like characteristic number three, Tokyo Revengers comes in a two-for-one deal. While both teens and adults can get something out of the work, there are still additional pieces of the story particularly for adults and particularly for teens given the different eras in which Takamichi finds himself in. What's more, adults can learn from teens just as much as teens can learn from adults. What's one of the leading factors that can escalate comprehension? You guessed it, varying perspectives. This is especially effective when those perspectives come from different places in time, and Tokyo Revengers adds a whole new meaning to the differences in these time placements. Like I mentioned earlier, it all comes down to learning. The more a work can sincerely target diverse audience members, the more developed and advanced the learning will be. As I wrap up, I wanted to mention that I originally didn't intend for this video to come off like an MLA college paper as much as it did, but since one of my main assertions focused on the importance of learning, I felt like I needed to touch on prominent literary features. I also wanted to make sure my analysis of Tokyo Revengers was creative, given the vast amount of other takes there are on the series, which I'm glad there is, because the series is rightly deserving of all the praise it receives. Overall, Tokyo Revengers is well on its way to becoming a classic. While its structure isn't anything entirely new, it blossomed with new techniques that made it far superior than the original foundation, which may honestly be even more impressive. Tokyo Revengers heavily resembles young adult literature, but also adds its own individual take to make it stand out even more, which is exactly what peak fiction should do. To conclude, Tokyo Revengers is peak fiction and is worth its weight in gold. So stay gold, Takamichi. Stay gold. And with that said, remember everyone, you can't be a weeb without saying OOF! Later! <laughs>